Intelligent packaging with D2W. Plastic made with D2W can be used for all the same intents and purposes as ordinary plastic, and it can be recycled if collected. But if the packaging or product escapes collection and ends up as litter on land or sea, the D2W will get to work, breaking down the molecular bonds until the material is no longer a plastic and can be easily consumed by bacteria and fungi in the environment, harmlessly converting to carbon dioxide, water and biomass without leaving any toxic residues or persistent microplastics behind. Simple yet extraordinary. Welcome back to Marbella Now. My name is Nicole King and I'm going straight to a Zoom interview to the UK to welcome Michael to the program for a very good reason. As you saw from the video, there is, it would seem, a new technology to help with plastic waste. Anything that's biodegradable and better for our environment is certainly worth our time, which is why it really is a pleasure to welcome Michael to the program. How nice to meet you. Good to meet you as well. Big thank you to Anita Nordejay for setting it up. She was always um, quick in spotting those interesting people. Uh, Michael, before we start, D2W, which I believe is the brand, um, what is that from? Distribution to waste? What does that stand for? <laughs> yeah, D2W is the brand that you will find on something like 200,000 tons of plastic globally. It looks like um, a water droplet because essentially uh, this product, this technology would allow plastic to degrade and biodegrade to, to no more than CO2 and uh, H2O and a little bit of biomass. So it looks like a water droplet. Um, does D2W mean anything? Well, our technicians will say designed to work. Um, the less technical people will say um, degrades to water, but it doesn't because it degrades to much more than that. So what you're saying is that this molecule system that you guys have developed, this technology, when used in plastic production, actually, or the equivalent of plastic. So is it plastic or is it not plastic? Is it something you put into plastics? Because I understand is that then if it doesn't get thrown away in the right ways, it will then die, um, degrade itself. Okay, so essentially plastics is designed to last forever which is fantastic, but is a big problem if for any reason it ends up in the environment. And uh, that is today's issue. So our technology uh, goes into the manufacturing process of that plastic. So when you extrude it, you get all these plastic beads, it's melted into a liquid, it uh, goes into what we call an extruder, it, it makes bubbles. Um, so you turn it into a material it's in that process that we drop 1% of our D2W technology into the melt process of the plastic. And at that point, we can control the life of the plastic. So in other words, you're pre-treating the plastic not to last forever. We can design it for a time that's much, much shorter than the unknown. But how can that be controlled in the sense of, let's say, you've got a supermarket and they've got all their food covered in the plastic. What would stop the plastic suddenly disintegrating? Okay, so just to add a little bit more on this, this is not trigger technology where you just flick a light switch and it disappears tomorrow. This, this is a process which uh, changes as a result of light, heat, um, temperature, um, stress, all those factors uh, we dial into the formulations. So essentially, when we say that we know when it's going to degrade, we don't quite know when it's going to biodegrade because that would depend on the microbial activity. But we do know the speed, if we know the external conditions, that that piece of plastic will degrade from a plastic material to a biodegradable compound if it ends up in the open environment. So essentially, this technology is put together so it will give a service like so you go into the supermarket, you look at your packaging, um, your food's wrapped in plastic, and you're never going to be able to stop that because it preserves the plastic. Your bottles are in plastic. You, you don't want that to break up. But what you do want to happen, that if somebody throws it deliberately or accidentally into the open environment, 
you wanted to quickly and rapidly convert from a plastic material into these biodegradable compounds, which is what this technology does. Now that will happen in weeks, not in hours, but it's weeks, perhaps a few months, depending on the formulations that we agree with the user, where we can control it plus minus one or two months, one or two months. So if you're a grower and you go into the fields and you look at the way they protect crops, uh, that plastic is very difficult to recycle. The reason is it's full of soil. So you're transporting soil, which is not a good idea. So they like to burn it or they like to bury it. But with our technology, we can design it so it breaks up into biodegradable compounds in weeks, which means you don't have to pick it up. You let the carbon values sink back into the soil again. From what I'm hearing and knowing the obvious worry from manufacturers of plastic containers, this sounds like an, a way for them to be able to carry on with their manufacturing, not have to close down as long as they add in a few drops of your special D2W. Is this the case? Yes, it's like putting um, a teaspoon of sugar into your tea and mixing it. So you put a 1% addition into your normal polymer resin, uh, resin granule, before you blow it into a film. Um, and that will then make the film predictable. It will no longer be unpredictable. And, it, and it's interesting because we've got countries in the Middle East that actually made it mandatory that all plastics should be made with this technology. Have you had a good reaction from the industry? Well, there is a tug of war in the industry and it's nothing to do with science, it's to do with commercial interest. You've got the guys that want to kill plastics, if you like, the paper industry that says you should be buying our product because it's natural, it's homegrown and the rest of it. Um, then you've got the guys making alternative products to plastic, which they call compostable, usually made from crops. Um, and then you've got uh, our type of technology, which has the lowest environmental impact of the lot. And so it's a word. It is a war between the different industries. But surely you have your own out. niche with the plastic industry that's already existing. There is a load of plastic. Surely that would be the mission to get partnerships or collaborations with the existing plastic manufacturers to stop the future contamination from the same industries. I, I, I agree with that. And when you talk to the world's largest resin producers um, and saying, uh, yes, you're right, you should encourage recycling, but you should also have the biodegradable option as an insurance policy in the event it ends up in the open environment. Now, the answer to that, which is bizarre, is, uh, and it's like pressing the self-destruct button, uh, the answer to that is, well, if people believe this product's going to biodegrade, then you're going to encourage people to litter it. And so you're going to encourage people not to recycle it. Well, I don't really think that we could go that far, although I'm sure there will be those who think so. But I do see, even in Marbella, back in 2014, in the first United Nationalities of Marbella Summit, the environmental issues were on the bottom of the list and had the least interest. And I would say that's a full turnaround in the last seven years, that it now one of the top priorities on just our small community. So I'd have to feel that there is that trend to take this in, in control. I would have thought a plastic manufacturer would have been delighted to know they can just add a few drops of your product and just carry on doing what they've been doing. They, they should be delighted. It saves their industry and it resolves the final question. When people say plastic's evil, it's terrible, it's bad, um, they can add all the points that we add and say it's actually the best of the best. It's got the least environmental impact of any other product. It has the lowest CO2 emissions from cradle to grade than any other product. And we've now dealt with the litter issue, which was never our problem. If this product ends up in the open environment, we can now predict the time that it's going to self-destruct into biodegradable compounds and then eventually biodegrade back into nature. Very, very strong story. But when I talk to you and people that are perhaps listening to this, you get it. But when you try and present this to governments and you present it to large corporates, they're worried that it might push uh, people away from their, I'm moving towards paper, I'm going to charge more, it sounds better, I don't want to enter this fight. Sounds very political to me. How long since you 
launched D2W? Well, the company was established in 1995. Uh, I took the view that this was so big, I had to make it public. I wanted to share it with people. So we listed on the AIM market in 2001. So if you like, we're in our 26th year now. And it's been 26 years of incredible fighting, um, showing evidence after evidence after evidence. The last most powerful piece of evidence that we announced to the market yesterday was the end of a five-year study that was done independent. Uh, it's about a two million euro study looking at our technology in the oceans. And it, we demonstrated that that conversion from a plastic material into what we call oligomers, they are biodegradable materials, soluble in water, non-plastic. Uh, that was confirmed in, in the oceans. And if you can go that far, which we did, the biodegradation, which was also confirmed by marine species. So we looked at oysters, we looked at sea bass, we looked at all sorts of marine species that were doing well. Nothing was toxic, it was very, very safe. So there was, if you like, for the first time ever, a major, major independent study. But on top of 40 years of peer-reviewed scientific papers that proves the technology worked by some of the world's top scientists. But the scientists on the other side that are promoting paper and crop, they have more funds, therefore more funds, more noise, they can communicate more efficiently than, if you like, us, a small aim listed company on the LSE. Have you had any triumphs with companies, whether it local or internationally, with what you're doing that's kept you going and motivated to carry on? Oh, sure. I mean, this morning we announced our results to the market. COVID year last year, sales up um, 17, 18%. We should have been 25, 27% up. Um, but we had shipping congestion, so we didn't get up to the full uh, amount. But against lockdowns, we're still driving our sales up, albeit, yes, we have antimicrobials that will preserve the life of food, protect food, kill coronavirus on face masks and gloves and things like that. But the main part of our business, is our D2W, biodegradable technology, where sales didn't go down, like with most companies, they actually increased during a horrid year last year. And this year is set to really, really move itself, but not in Europe. Europe is a dogfight, which is why we took legal action against the European Parliament, the European Commission, uh, and the European Council for passing a directive that essentially confuses people even further that says, Oxo-degradable, because it fragments, it can't be recycled, it's got no proven environmental benefit, should be banned effective from July. Well, they don't describe our product, but they go around telling everybody it is our product. So they're putting a restriction notice out like that, illegally, based on our legal advice, created a legal challenge. So it's us now versus the European Parliament. Why do you care so much, Michael? Why do I care? Because yes, why are you on this? It's obviously you are going uphill, challenges on every front. You've been doing this for a long time. There must be something that keeps you with that encouragement to continue. Well, what I can say is that the technology is right, it's proven. Um, we know that if we stand the test of time, and we have, we can float on the London Stock Exchange, which we did, our shareholder base increases, our sales are increasing, and we've now got new countries legislating for the technology, it means we'll win the world and we will eventually win Europe. It's only a matter of time and we're getting to the end of that tunnel. Because at the end of the day, what is the best for the consumer? What is the best for the environment? What is the best for health? And, and, and you look it all up and you put the evidence down as we have by independent scientific papers, you only come out with one product. So any way you look at it, cost, disruption, effectiveness now, you could stop the plastic pollution issue. You can stop this nonsense on microplastics being formed by plastic by using this technology. So on the basis that we've got that firm uh, scientific evidence behind us, 
and we've got a very, very strong scientific team. We work with a lot of universities. We work with a lot of labs. We've got our own very strong scientific team in this facility that I'm talking from today. We are testing thousands and thousands of samples from everywhere. And you know, 200,000 tons of plastic per year is what we're already treating with our technology. It's a big, big number, a really big number. And it's in nearly 100 countries around the world. So we are making progress. It's just the headwinds that have slowed it up. To hear figures like that is just astronomical. So congratulations for all the good you are already doing. Just before we finish, who is your target client? Who should be taking the most heed to know to contact you? Oh, a target a client should be the ones that use the most amount of plastics. Um, that would be the supermarkets, uh, the growers, um, Anyone that's saying, I'm going to remove plastics, uh, should be looking at this technology. They shouldn't try to fool people with technology that's costing them the earth, that's got an environmental impact far worse than using plastic. Those are the people that should be using this technology. And your viewers, they should look at D2W uh, on the website, d2w.net. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of information on that. There's a huge amount of information. There's also a lot of endorsements on the technology. Be part of it, be informed. But when somebody says to you, I'm going to charge you for using your plastic, which we're doing here in the UK, they're not saving the environment. And if people think I'm going to stop using plastic and I'm doing good, you're not, because you're likely to have more food waste. You're likely to have more contamination. If your face mask, for example, was for this technology, you wouldn't have face masks blowing all over the environment. So my message is to everybody, not to just one corporation or company. All of us to be aware so that we can help with the cause, undoubtedly. Yes. Michael, thank you so much. And again, congratulations for everything you guys have already achieved. I look forward to a catch up in a little while to see how things are going. And I really hope that this has helped bring your technology to a larger audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And don't go away. We're going to a little break. Some messages from our sponsors and from our Zero Hero partners giving free soft drinks to the designated driver because hashtag we are better together. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. Hey, hey. Judy likes to consider herself a clever young woman, which is why she thought very carefully before choosing her insurance company. Now that she needs it, she's jolly glad she chose Linear Director, as it looks as if she might have something better to do. Why don't you be clever, like Judy? Call Linear Director on 952-1478-34 and see which policy is best for you. When I'm the designated driver, I think it's only fair that I get to choose a Zero Hero venue that rewards me with free soft drinks. My friends all get to choose and booze, and they feel safe going home with me. Make sure that you get your reward for being the designated driver. Why pay if you don't have to? Hi guys, Ross here from Hogenstein. Proud to be a member of the Zero Hero campaign. And, uh, we recommend everybody. Nobody drives drinking. Everybody who drives a car doesn't have any alcohol in their system. And we're proud to sponsor the Zero Hero program. GYN is happy to be Zero Hero partner. How cool is that? <laughs> GYN. Glad okay. I are proud to present Zero to Hero. Never drink and drive. So much trouble. Mike Moses is proud to be a Zero Hero partner. Out of bounds, Zero Hero partners. Here we are, the sticker going on. Delighted to welcome everybody and to be part of the Zero Hero campaign. Delighted. Zero Hero, welcome here. here. And, and they now turn in our rooms. And welcome.
welcome to Lemongrass Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Hiro Hiro, welcome to Portofino, Cabo Pino. Kazutua is proud to welcome the Zero Heroes. So come on in and enjoy free soft drinks for anyone who is the designated driver. Thank you, Nicole. As my regular viewers will know, last week was our 300th week of recording Marbella Now. That's six years, and it's been so much fun. I've met some amazing people, and I've learned so much. I thought it'd be fun to finish off the week with a little bit of behind the scenes recordings that my friend Yvonne Scott took from here, behind the scenes of me with Charmaine, Simone and all my other guests and then a little celebration at Portside in Puerto Banús to commemorate the moment. Hey, hey. So here we have the cake for the 300th program and we're going to cut the cake. Okay, next guest is here and I have so many people. Go, girl. Welcome back to Marbella Now. My name is Nicole King, and I'm delighted to be once again in the RTV Marbella studios, and more so because we are recording this week our 300th week of programs, which is like six years, which is very cool. And I'm very So, 
And before I drive home, I promised my daughter that if I wasn't capable, I wouldn't drive. <laughs> That's it for another week. Thank you so much for joining me here at RTV Marbella Studios. Thank you to all my guests. I hope that you've met some really interesting people and learned as much as I have. Take care of yourselves, be nice to each other, and remember that you can record, watch recordings of the programme from the RTV Marbella website or the link from my NicoleKing.es website that not only has links to Marbella now, but also to our Zero Hero website, with full listings of the venues that welcome designated drivers with free soft drinks and to my Marbella Moments column in the Euro Weekly News. As I say, thank you for joining us. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next week. We can change if we try.